Hi, diary. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a a middle ground and what I mean by that is it would be unfair for me to define my son by the way that he died alone because that wouldn't contain the context, the full context of, of his story. It wouldn't be any more fair to omit the fact that somehow addiction led to his death. And that, according to his roommates, that he had expressed desire to use as part of his normal course of expressing his stress. But to be clean for four and a half years is a long time. And to then get pulled back into it it must somehow mean that there's never a, a discontinuation of the addiction somehow it's just receded or it's being controlled or managed or ignored or denied or and I think all those things were at play in my son's life. I think he put a lot of positive between himself and his addiction, his desire to use. I've never done heroin myself, so I don't, I can't speak to the the feeling but it I can only think that it must be pretty amazing or compelling to to have um, drawn Forrest in and I think there's also a kind of under counterculture underbelly, like dark underbelly of society that pulled him in because he kind of got back into this through some seedy characters. And people that are truly like doing bad things can be very seductive. I've, I've experienced that in my own life, especially wanted, when I wanted to use drugs. And the other thing I've said is that Forrest and I use drugs, it seems very similarly. I did what I did privately, like in my 20s, I was into mushrooms. That was like a private thing that I did. And when we found them growing in Golden Gate Park, there was like, a two-year period where every time it rained we would go look for them and find some and me and my roommate and a close roommate and um, yeah sometimes alone sometimes with him but it would be like to go inward and it seemed like Forrest has that, had that same impulse. But I never experienced like a creepy, seedy, criminal side in my own, 
in my own drug use, but I've met junkies. I, I worked with heroin users when I was in, if you can call it working, they never showed up and it was a, it was a freak show um, of accidents either waiting to happen or have happened. So maybe in my early formative years, seeing a few people that were just on it was enough to make me never want to be part of that club. But it's, but it's not, was not the case with my son who, who found heroin to be the top. And it's not just him, it's in my education here, my self-education, it's the drug of, on top. I think it's like crack, meth, and heroin. Those are the three big drugs in jail, those are the three big drugs that people swear by as ultimate... I don't even understand, even as a former cigarette smoker, who it took years to quit, like how people can cannot see that rip off, that complete, that's just an addiction. And they got you for lots of money and you're gonna feel crappy every single day. You know, so I, I insisted Forrest not smoke. I was, I was at a point where I was militant about How degrading that is. And he, he tried it a little but didn't didn't do it. And I would tell his young roommates who are in their twenties, you know, like why the hell are you smoking? You should be fucking boxing you know they're beautiful they're young and they're and they're more or less chain smoking and maybe this brings me to my point is when people use and self-medicate however we do it you know alcohol food sex drugs gambling um, sleeping neurosis you know, when, when we, we know, I think, in some portion of ourselves something's wrong and out of balance and, and, um, and we are trying to block out dealing with it, perhaps, with these self-medicating um, strategies, if you want to call them that. But you get addicted to whatever, and then it owns you, you know. So my son was not just using, he was, he was needing to use at the time that he died. Because he was, he was into it for a couple of months that I know of. And you're, you're hooked in a few days, from what I understand. And by hooked, you need it, you know, every few days, and then multiple times. And anyway the you get it and it's the same thing with anything that has that that purpose or that quality so that you can't control the frequency the frequency controls you it And I think any time I've been like seriously on an addicted period, I, I knew it. It was just easier for me. Except for maybe the alcohol, that was a hard time. Alcohol so insidious, and it just kills you 
in a such slow way and it drags on and on and ruins everything around you, all your business plans and you're just full of denial and it's everybody else's thing and it's so shitty. It's such a shitty way to live. You know, being addicted to anything is, is just, it's just a shitty way to live. It's bad for everybody around us. I didn't want that for my kids. I still use cannabis in, in oil, just being honest. And I've been self-medicating with the guitar and with exercising and with the cannabis. I don't think anybody can survive heroin or meth, crack. I feel really I would feel really bad for people. But maybe there's a percentage of people that can come to terms with it within themselves. I know I did. I didn't go back to smoking after quitting many times. I finally got done with it. I prefer breathing. I prefer running up steps. <laughs> it's basic stuff. 